Before watching this section of the DVD, we suggest you first read the chapter on Sutra Techniques, Chapter 3. The aim of this section is to show you exactly how to handle instruments, how to put in sutras, and how to tie, and sometimes to bury, knots. Practice first with the naked eye using sheets of polystyrene foam or something similar. And then practice under the microscope using animal or artificial eyes if you can. When you are totally competent and relaxed with the techniques, you are then ready to operate on patients with supervision. So first we will use polystyrene foam and fairly large 4-0 silk suture. Hold the forceps like this and not like this to avert the edges of the wound. Hold the needle at its midpoint in the tip of the needle holder. Don't touch the tip of the needle or you will blunt it very quickly. Pass the needle through the tissue, such as the skin, by rotating it and not pushing it. Without letting go of the forceps, now grasp the needle again and pull it through the first half of the wound. Now repeat the process again for the other side of the wound, starting from inside and going outside. It will feel a bit strange at first. Try not to use your hands to pick up the suture, but always use the instruments. Now you have to tie the knot. The standard surgeon's knot uses a double throw forwards, then a single throw back, and a further throw forward. This is called 2 1 1. Grasp the long thread with the forceps, a suture tying forceps, and wind the thread twice around the needle holder in a forward direction. Then grasp the short end of the thread in the jaws of the needle holder and have the two ends of the thread crossing over. Don't wind the thread backwards, like this little clip, and make sure that the threads cross over, so that the thread which is away from you comes towards you, and the thread which was towards you comes away from you. Pull the thread so it is fairly tight, and repeat the process, but just winding the thread once around the needle holder. Make sure, again, that the two ends of the thread cross over and you will wind forwards around the needle holder and not backwards. Finally, make a third throw. Tighten the knot securely and cut the ends. For skin stitches, leave the knot at one end on the surface. Now we will modify that basic technique for intraocular surgery and suturing a wound in the cornea or the sclera. For this, we use an operating microscope and 10-0 monofilament nylon is the standard suture that we use for corneal or corneoscleral suturing. The main difference is that the knot 
must be buried inside the tissue and not left on the surface. There are two ways of burying the knot. First, the stitch can be rotated by grasping it with the suture tying forceps and pulling the stitch around so that the knot gets buried. Alternatively, if you begin and end your suture inside the wound rather than on the surface of the cornea or sclera, the knot will automatically be buried. When you are suturing the cornea or the sclera, aim to put the stitches through at least 50% of the thickness, but not right through. Finally, here are two very useful ways of suturing incisions into the eye. The cross or X stitch is one. This starts inside the wound Then a further stitch is placed on the right starting and finishing outside the wound Then it is brought back to finish again inside the wound When the stitch is tied, there will be secure closure and the knot will automatically be buried. Here we see a demonstration of the bootlace suture done on a piece of polystyrene. Here we see its use in a patient. It is a very quick and secure way of closing the wound following cataract surgery and leaves no knots. We start at the left hand end of the incision inside the wound. We then pass three or four running loops all the way to the far end of the incision and three or four back again and then finish with the stitch inside the wound. When this is tied, it is a very quick and secure way of suturing the incision and leaves no knots on the surface. It's best to make the first half hitch of the knot, then to make any last minute intraocular manipulations, such as washing out the anterior chamber or adjusting the intraocular lens with a dialer, then to tighten all the loops so as to take up the slack at the knot, and then finally secure the knot with two further half hitches.